Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to expand on a previous video I uploaded before about creating VLANs on your MX configuration. And uh, let me just go over this quickly. To create a VLAN on your MX configuration, you would go to Security and SD1, Addressing and VLAN. And then you would scroll down to the Add VLAN section. You will enter the VLAN ID, the name, the network, and the subnet mask. And that's going to be your VLAN configuration. Then you will scroll down to the uh, ports and you will enable the VLAN on your desired port. That is how you create a VLAN on the MX. It's a pretty straightforward basic configuration. From that point on, you would connect your device to that port where you enabled the VLAN and the device should be able to connect. Now, that is a basic and quick configuration, but the truth is that in most environments, you are not going to be connecting uh, devices or endpoint devices, be it computers or uh, servers, to the MX, right? You will connect switches to the MX because you're going to have more uh, devices. So, um, with that being said, uh, this video uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a basic network with multiple VLANs and how to do the configuration. This video is intended for beginners or people who would like to understand more about VLANs and configurations. If you are an experienced network administrator or an experienced network engineer, this video is not for you because it is um, basic configuration. Also, I'm doing this in a Cisco Meraki environment, but the uh, concepts, the networking information is applicable to any type of networking gear you're using in your environment. So with that being said, um, let's go over this um, diagram. I already have the um, VLAN 50 configured on my MX, as you can see here, right? And uh, I already have that VLAN tagged on port number one, that is the uplink port on the firewall between the firewall and the MS switch. So I came down here. Actually, I don't have it configured, so let me do that right now. So the VLAN is created. Let me come here and tag the port with the VLAN. As you can see, I just click on the down pointing arrow. That's going to show me the VLANs available. Selected, update. Now, I have this part of the configuration on the MX firewall done. Now, I have to come down to the MS switch on the same uplink interface, and I have to select the uplink port on the MS switch, right? That in this case is port number eight. So let me go uh, to my switch configuration. Uh, I have a tab open, but you can go to switch and then as many switches as you have. You'll select that information from there. So port number eight, um, as you can see, it is a best practice to name or label these ports because when you work in medium size and large environments, this may be confusing if you don't have the ports labeled. Uh, the label is just a label. It doesn't have any specific setting or configuration that's going to be applied to the port. It's just for informational purposes. So I'm going to add VLAN 50 to my um, switch port. And as you could see, let me go back there. I have the port configured as a trunk. And that's what you would like to do when you are configuring ports that are going to transmit multiple VLANs between switches or between switches and firewalls or routers, right? You want to configure that as port. 
and then um, you configured a, um, a, a, a port as an access port when you have endpoint devices, servers, computers connected to it. So uh, this is done. As you could see, I have VLAN 50 already configured. So let me go back to the diagram. So we can say that we have VLAN 50 configured on port 1 of the firewall and on port 8 of the firewall and that is the uplink. Now, how do we allow devices on separate VLANs to connect or to communicate with each other over the switch? We have to enable the VLANs on the specific ports the devices are connected to. So I am going to go to port number 3, that is VLAN 50 of the switch. And as a matter of fact, before I go there, let me show you this. I am running a continuous ping from VLAN 1, the native VLAN 172.16.5 to VLAN 50, 172.16.50 and because the configuration is not done, the ports are not tagged yet, um, it's not working as you can see. So let me uh, go over to my switch and I'm going to go to port number 3. Port number 3, <coughs> port number three is uh, VLAN 50 right and um, as you could see the default configuration for uh, the uh, switch ports is strong configuration so i'm going to change that to an access port and i have to select what's going to be my native vlan for this access port and i'm going to configure that as 50 because that's the uh, subnet that i'm using Oh, or not the subnet, the network that I'm using, the 172.16.50, that 2 is the IP address, slash 27. I'm going to name this, um, I'm going to name this, what I'm going to name this, um, server, right? 172.16.50. That 2, this is just for reference purposes I'm gonna update this actually this is 50 and then I'm gonna go to trunk a uh, port number four and I'm gonna create this as an access port the native VLAN is gonna be VLAN number one and I'm gonna have this as desktop computer or anything you want to name this and I'm going to update the configuration and that is done now I'm going to pause the video for a few seconds to let the system update the configuration in the background as you can see I am still not able to get from one side of the network to the other so let's just pause the video for a, a minute or so and then I'll start it again when the configuration is active. Okay, so I am back. As you can see here, now the devices are communicating with each other. Um, one of the uh, drawbacks of cloud configuration is that it may take a minute or two for the configuration to be applied once you uh, create it. So um, that's how you uh, configure your VLANs in your network environment. Make sure, again, just to do a quick recap, that the devices on the switch ports where you have endpoint devices, like um, computers and servers, you configure those as access points or access ports i should say the uplinks between your networking devices switches and routers and firewalls should be configured as 
trunk ports and you do the configuration in there and tag the VLANs and the routers or in this case the firewall slash router is going to do the routing between the two different segments and it's going to uh, direct the traffic in that specific way as you could see this was a basic configuration but uh, as you keep on expanding your network and creating different VLANs it's going to get maybe a little bit more complicated but it's all the same concept in the next video we're going to be adding a access point to this configuration with two SSIDs a guest SSID and in an office SSID and we're going to have the SSIDs on different networks so you can see how the configuration needs to uh, take place so I hope that this video was useful if you found this information uh, useful to you please just uh, comment and click on the like button and uh, you have a great day ahead of you. Bye.